recording this lesson to show you a little bit about proportion and how to draw portraits. So what you're going to get today is a piece of paper, just a blank piece of paper. In between you and a partner is an oval template and an eraser or pencils are there for you to use as well. I want you to first to start out in the corner of your paper or on the back side, write your name, your grade, and your teacher's initials. So if you were in third grade, June, you'd put a 3J. You are going to share this oval with the person next to you or somebody else at your table, and it is the shape of your face. So we're going to do head, neck, and shoulders. So you are going to first trace the oval really lightly with your pencil. You want to do it lightly so that if it's not the right size or shape, you can't erase. So you can see that. And then you are going to do head, neck, and shoulders. Now you want to do head, neck, and shoulders. I'm going to just darken this because you can't really see it on the screen. When you do head, neck, and shoulders, you want to make sure that they're the right size for the size oval that you, you placed on your paper. And notice I placed the oval at the top of the paper so I have a room for neck and shoulders. Um, the first thing when you're thinking of proportion is you have to draw the neck. And now the neck comes down from the sides of your chin and curve outwards. You are also going to put the shoulders on to your paper, so you're going to go off of the paper, believe it or not, because on the sides of your paper, you could almost fit an entire head on your shoulder if you were to look in a mirror. You are then going to make sure your other, other people get to use the oval, and you're going to think about guidelines. Now, there's all sorts of tips and tricks to getting a drawing the right, right proportion. Um, here's an example of one that I did earlier today. Um, all of these different little lines are there for placement and spacing. They all give you um, measurements of how big something should be. So I'm going to teach you how to do those. The first step is to cut the head or the oval completely in half, horizontally and vertically. When you look in a mirror, your eyes are actually smack dab in the middle of your head. Um, when you look at a person's face, you see their eyes in the middle of their head, but you um, have at the top forehead and hair, and at the bottom you have nose and mouth. So that's why it seems like the eyes are higher than they actually are. So what we have to do to get the eyes the right size is you are going to have some spacer eyes. Believe it or not, if you take your eye, um, the size of your eye, across your face, um, you could fit five of them end to end. Now we're only going to keep two, but believe it or not, the, the space in between your eyes, nose, and the sides of your head is the same size as your eye. So if you start with the center eye, and it's going to be this, uh, the shape of a football, just drawing the top of that, and you take the space from here to here and cut it in half and put a dot, if this curve is the same size as this curve, then you probably got this one to be the right size. This is also going to want it to be approximately that right size. So over here, taking the extra space, cutting it in half, going from edge to edge, um, you are going to then keep these two eyes. And these three are spacers. I'm just trying to get it a little bit more in focus for you. And then I'm going to lock it. Let's see. All right. So these two eyes are going to be the shape of a football, like I said. And inside your eye, you have the colored part, which is a circle. It's called the iris. And you don't see the whole circle. You see the corners are the whites of your eyes. And then there's a pupil in the center. And I want you to finish drawing those eyes so that they um, look the way that you need them to. Okay. So at the bottom part of our head, we, like I said, we have a nose and a mouth. So what I want you to do are draw. So... Your eyes, the pupils of your eyes, are guide. If you draw guidelines straight down, and you feel on your own face, drawing from pupils to the corners of your mouth. That's what lines up. So your mouth is going to go on this line. This line here, um, if you feel the width of your eye, and then put your the, that same amount of space around your nose. That's how big your nose is. So your nose is going to be here, and your mouth is going to be here. For reason it just keeps going out of focus for me and I want the video to be a little bit more interesting for you so let's see if I zoom in okay. 
So to draw a, a realistic human nose, you're going to do a very wide U, put ovals on their sides, staying within those guidelines, curve underneath the nostril and up towards the eye. Now your nose may be thinner or thicker at, at the bridge of the nose, um, but that's a good way to draw a realistic nose. Now like I said, your eyes are going to be um, guidelines for how big your mouth is. So your mouth, if you start out with a football shape, you want to split it into two lips. At the top of our mouth, we have a little dip. Um, and where our lips part, you have another little dip. And you curve down and over. You can cut it into two lips, like so. Now, um, above our eyes, we have eyebrows. And eyebrows are many different hairs that overlap and curve towards our ears. Our ears actually line up with our eyebrows. So if you feel on the side of your head where your eyebrow is and you put your finger way over, you'll see that the top of your ear is lines up with your eyebrow and the bottom of your ear comes down to your nose. So I just draw like a side view of the ear. Up here is space for forehead and hair. So you're going to kind of look in the mirror at your, your hairline and draw that in place Keeping in mind, you don't have hair just along the top of your head, but above your head as well. If you have short hair, you would draw those short hairs and look in the mirror and see which direction that they go. You can even erase this line here where your head is so that that, that scalp line isn't in your drawing. If you have long hair, you would draw longer lines and see which direction that they would go. If you have short hair, then you would be pretty much done unless you can see something behind your ears here. Now, if you have long hair, long hair will then extend coming down all the way. Now, you don't want to leave a little space here. A lot of people forget that the hair comes all the way to the neck. See, you can't see behind people through your hair there. So what I want you to do is make sure that the hair goes all the way to the neck. Now, if you've drawn your guidelines light enough, at this point, you would then go ahead and erase all of those little lines that helped to get everything in the right size and proportion so that you do not have um, anything too big or too small. Now I drew a couple pictures of pro proportions that are not um, in the right spot. For instance, this one here, while comical, it, I did it on purpose. The eyes are too tiny for the big giant head. The nose might be the right size, but we can't tell because the eyes aren't the right size. The mouth is too small, the ears are too small, they're too high, um, the neck is too tiny, and the shoulders are so small that they almost are the same size as his nose. The opposite extreme would be making your features way too large. In this drawing here, I have an example of too big of eyes, too big of mouth. The ears are huge, and the neck is drawn wrong. They took just the shoulders and went out and forgot about the neck. So those are some common mistakes along with big bushy zigzaggy eyebrows. You want to draw them a little bit more realistic and the more you practice, the better the outcome of drawing portraits will end up being. Now I will walk around, I will also have a worksheet out to help you step by step and I will show you on my own face all of the way that, ways that these do match up. Thank you so much for listening.